Britain's most famous atheist, Professor Richard Dawkins, uh, said, faith is the great cop-out, the great excuse to evade the need to think and evaluate evidence. Um, to St. Augustine, a founding father of Christian theology, understanding is the reward of faith. Therefore, seek not to understand that you may believe, but believe that you may understand. So is faith compatible with reason? Now, um, Will, you, you've written this really book, the Heretics, The Heretics, Adventures with the Enemies of Science. Now, the psychology of this is really interesting, how somebody, and you deal with, you know, creationists and people into horoscopes and all sorts, uh, past life regression people, we've got somebody of, of that ilk to talk to, I'm delighted <laughs> to say in the studio, uh, David Irving, the, the Hitler apologist, and the the psychology is interesting that in the face of overwhelming evidence to the contrary, people will still stick to their belief and will just have this kind of filtering system in their mind. It's fascinating. Yes, yes. So, so what I discovered was that people decide what to believe with their emotions. So we, could, we are confronted by a, a fact and we decide emotionally, instantaneously, whether we believe it or not. And through lots of different processes, but one of them is called confirmation bias, we will then seek evidence to justify that emotional response. And any evidence that we come across to contradict our emotional response, we'll dismiss it and distort it and say the person who's coming up with, the, with what they're saying is just an idiot. And, and this is how we kind of, our beliefs sort of come about and we, uh, and, and we become more and more convinced that they're right. But it all begins with feelings. Yeah, and it's sort of the quest for certainty. Yes, yeah, so people are very intolerant of doubt. So people will have this kind of drive to, to, to find more and more evidence to back up their... Their beliefs. Although doubt has arguably driven discovery in the past and driven science and driven, driven progress, you know. Absolutely. And I think that, um, you know, people are naturally intolerant of doubt, but we need to sort of have a bit of humility about what we believe and understand that we should always encourage that feeling of doubt. Hmm. Uh, so, past life, past life. regression well, therapy. Most people think they know about past lives mm. and what I do don't unless they experience it. No, you sure, know. but you've said, I've just, you said, I can't scientifically prove things, I just know they're no, true. No, can't what you've said. scientifically prove it, but quantum physics, bizarrely, is starting to prove that the heart has a cohesive waveform. It has a pattern which is replicated, which creates emotion, and everyone's thoughts and beliefs are coming from an origin. Where do your thoughts and beliefs come from? Well, they come from three strains. They come from either ancestral patterns which are passed down through ancestors which we call genetic which I also work with when I regress people to change what's programmed in their subconscious not the conscious mind but the subconscious and then you have past life patterns and then you have compounded stuff from being in the womb to present day because you have consciousness in the womb and this creates your current reality even weight is an issue of a slowed metabolism coming from programming from either past lives or ancestors that's why it's genetic a lot of people in your family might be overweight when you clear the emotion reason running on a subconscious level because the conscious self is going no I've no issues but the subconscious is running another story so what's your external proof then I mean how you external proof is clients people who've experienced it and they change their reality they change their experience I don't deny your reality exists that person's reality. all realities exist but they exist exist within different dimensions we live in a multi-dimensional well, reality <laughs> we live in a holographic universe but can you just we live in a what a holographic <laughs> universe <laughs> What, 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 sorry? <laughs> Babel. I mean, it's free will to believe Babel. it's Babel. You know, it's free will. I think one of the reasons why a lot of people here probably haven't heard of past life regression is, is that there's no scientific been, basis. Yeah, it's been given a bad, bad press. The burden of proof rests with you. You need to prove what you've just I've said. I've proved myself. I've done uh, this on TV. I used to have my own show on ITV. I've proved it. Prove it. Wait, let's, 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 let's listen to Rob, price. because Rob, the, the, point, the point you make is kind of the, the, a scientific a theory attains the status of scientific theory, and if anything disproves it, or successfully refutes it, it is no longer a theory. Right. Yeah, basically, yeah. At, at the outset, you said uh, your heart tells you that this is yeah, true. Yeah, I feel what yeah. I feel is can, my Can I truth. remind you, your heart isn't the organ that allows you to think and it reason. It does. Heart has, has um, an intelligence, and science is proving that now. Reason is, reason is based on um, empirical evidence that is testable, falsifiable, um, and, and that is uh, Newtonian. Very, very, very verifiable. That's and you're Newtonian not able to Cartesian do that. It's, thinking. It's did you interrupt in a previous life as well? I did. I love interrupting. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just let, let, let Rob finish. Go on, Rob. No, that's all I have to say. The burden of proof rests with you. You, mm. you can't provide the evidence. I can't provide it's such the a evidence. dangerous way to look, to it's look not at life. Dangerous. You can, There's nothing dangerous. You can justify it? anything, a belief in anything. Anybody's with faith. experience is their reality. 
everybody's experience is their reality. If someone's life is improved by the work I do or someone else does similar to what mm. I do, well, then you can't fact. deny it There's and they heal correlation. disease and illness. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I mean, Christina, you're a, you're a physicist, physicist, but also a Christian, mm. but you see great proof of God in, in, in physics don't you, and in, well, in, 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 the, in the world around you. Although some would say that as those mysteries are unraveled, as we progress scientifically and we discover more and more, some argue there's, there's less of a space for God. But the rainbow is a good example. Oh, God did it. Well, now we know how rainbows through the refraction of light work. So okay. it's the idea of the God of the gaps. Those gaps get smaller and smaller. Okay. Um, right. Um, so if I can just sort of set the background here. So let's think about faith generally, right? Mm. If you just think about faith in human life. So um, hopefully husbands have faith in their wives, vice versa. Okay, so that's based on past experience. Um, but you don't know that your, father, that your spouse is going to be faithful in the future. So you're taking something from the past which is rational, reasonable, you know, based on the um, observation of this person as you're courting. And then at some point, if one of you decides will both decide at the same time you want to get married. Once you're married, then you, know, you, you have told each other, you will try and stay together, you have faith that this person will be steady, um, kind, faithful, and you have to keep going. At some point, um, you, know, you might start thinking, is he seeing someone else, for example? Um, and then you can either say, uh, well, I'll, I'll trust in him a bit longer until it's absolutely obvious that he's being unfaithful, or you could start setting um, but it's falsifiable, it's scientific, you can, you can get a private detective yeah, to okay, find out. Yeah, okay, right. But there is still an element of taking what you know to be true and applying that to the future which you don't actually know, right? So other examples are um, orchestras and their conductors. So the conductor um, has to go take the orchestra through a series of rehearsals. You have to have faith that the, orchestra, the conductor is going to rehearse you okay. enough in the different places. Oh, okay, okay. So far? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think it's interesting. Um, so we were talking about past life regression, which I have experienced. Um, uh, and you say, you know, you know it in your heart that it's real. And I think it's the same with Christians. I mean, Christians begin with an extremely powerful emotional conviction that God is real. Mm -hmm. But of course, we don't know that God is real until you've actually been in a room with God and shaken his hand. You don't know that it's real. Absolutely. It begins with a feeling. And yeah. the source of your feelings is your brain. It's your mind. It's not anything out there. And, you know, we all, and we were all the same, and I'm no more rational in, the, in, in lots of ways than you. I'm not saying that I'm Mr. Perfect. You know, we all have these, we all begin with these feelings, but these feelings aren't to be trusted. Well, I would say these that... Feelings it, aren't, why aren't these feelings to be trusted? Because, um, uh, because I I emotions, uh, you know, we all live in a kind of, uh, we all tell ourselves stories about the world, and these stories are very emotional. They're full of people who hate us and love us, and they're good guys and bad. And that's how, you know, the, the brain is like a story generating... Mm -hmm. Uh, organism. It's not a fact-generating organism. So and, and we become vulnerable to these, to these narratives we tell of the world. And um, uh, as I say, they, they, they lead us down these sort of very distorted passages in terms of what we should and shouldn't believe. Well, it's, it's not about should and shouldn't. It's, I mean, God, okay, there is, there is obviously a difference. I mean, clearly God is invisible. You know, we don't wake up and huge sort of face of God smiling down at us from the sky. Um, now, is that deliberate? I mean, is God perhaps setting us up, if you think about the story of Beauty and the Beast, um, so Beauty wakes up, I can't remember the story, but she wakes up, there's this bit, and, and, and she's, everything's provided for, there's this sort of sumptuous mansion, she can't see who's in charge, it's the Beast obviously, um, and, and, and she gets to know his character through what he's providing for her, so that when they meet, she understands his actual kindness rather than just judging him from appearance. Mm. Okay. Well, well, we, we, with respect, what we're seeing here is, is, is confirmation bias in action. So, you know, you're an intelligent person, you, you have this belief in God, but there's a problem. Where is God? I can't see him. So now we're actually watching you doing it. So, so how can we explain this? How can we, how can we think our way around this? <laughs> Your, your book sounds really, really interesting, and I'm looking forward to reading it. Um, and you're absolutely right about confirmation bias, but the point about reason is that it, uh, a belief in reason or a belief in the, the value of reason encourages you 
to make to advance hypotheses, to test them, Absolutely. to reach conclusions, and constantly to test those to conclusions. Challenge theories when those hypotheses exactly. become theories. Faith does the yeah. absolute reverse. Yeah. It begins well, with the conclusion and rejects evidence that doesn't yeah. fit with it. Exactly. Okay, yeah. that is, that's not true. That's not true. Julia. So, many people come to faith through an intellectual understanding. They look at the evidence, historical, anthropological, archaeological, you know, the writers at the, at the time, and the verification, and that's what brings them to faith. It's the intellectual evidence base right. for faith it's that, it's that then is evidence. confirmed by existential experience. Intellectual, okay, come, let's just, just take that. That's just good. A intellectual evidence base confirmed by existential experience. Uh, sounds a bit of a spurious term, to be honest, because every... Every discovery that's ever been made by science has excluded a supernatural constituent in that explanation. Yeah. So well, that's the god of the gaps yeah, idea, it's, isn't it's it? It's the god of the gaps. And basically, I think you've been more than optimistic if you think that any scientific discoveries in the future will contain... What about, the, what about the human mind consciousness, which seems to exceed the sum of the parts? We do not have an understanding of the human mind, of yeah, human yeah, consciousness, yet, do we? Yet. No, not so yet. you're not there yet, are you? No, but, There's still well, a big gap, isn't However, I'm, I, I would even go and say, even if we could never understand human consciousness, I still I think, think the most implausible yeah. explanation for consciousness is an invisible man in the sky put it there. And also, There's going to be a well, scientific I don't, explanation I don't think in the future. Wait, one second, one second. More, more from the invisible three wise man. monkeys in just a second. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's an in, Why do we keep saying it's a man? Why can source, which is just life force energy, be male or female? Why can it, why can it not be both? You know? And also, I we, don't want you two to fall out with each other. We have yeah, the yeah. conscious <laughs> self and we have the subconscious yeah. self, and the subconscious self is running your flight, flight, react, you know, fight or flight reaction. That comes to from what within. It's not driven by yeah, an external force. Yeah, by your past force. life programming. No, it's, it's not driven by an external force. <laughs> no. Humanity and understanding it's an consciousness force. comes from within us. Life That's is from in with you. There's nothing out there. It's well, inside you. I would say John, John Paul II um, um, said, uh, faith and reason, I'll put this to you, Oliver, faith and reason are like two wings on which the human spirit rises to the contemplation of truth. Mm. Well, I mean, I've used the word again. That's Discuss. Com it's complete babble. Martin, Lu <laughs> Martin, Luther, Martin Luther was much closer to the mark when he said that reason was the greatest enemy a Christian faced and that, and that Christians should pluck out the eye of reason. Of course, the tragedy of that quotation is that he recognised that reason was a way of seeing things. Do you think that anyone there in this studio, for example, watching at home who has faith is being illogical? I think it's difficult. I think, I think people who have faith... Um, can, can begin from a, from, a, from a position that says faith is the primal thing, the most important thing, and then they can reason within that. But I, I've argued before, I just argued that actually faith and reason are diametrically opposed because one starts with a conclusion and one starts with a premise. The greatest mathematician who ever lived, Sir Isaac Newton, said just a thumbprint alone and the fact there are no two thumbprints in the world that are identical is enough to persuade him for there to be a creator God because probability is so infinitesimal for just that one fact Fact. That's what you know, led him to his. Uh, New, uh, New, 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 Newton, 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 yeah, yeah, Newton, some of the, well, some of the world's leading evolution, some of the world's leading evolution biologists are Christians. You know, Ayala and Ken Miller and uh, and Watson. You know, they they see w wonderful things in, the, for example, the natural processes of evolution. It's not exclusive. And it was uh, Stephen Jay Gould who spoke of the the non-overlapping magisteria of science and faith. They're, they're, they are compatible, they work together. It's like the idea of the wings. You don't buy that. No, I don't. I think uh, it's very difficult for me to reconcile evolution and faith because we, we now have to believe that God sort of twiddled his thumbs for billions of years waiting for evolution to deliver the human masterpiece. The reason why evolution has been accepted by faith is because the, of the dwindling, dwindling intellectual integrity of religion. They've been forced to sort of offer... The Church the of England accepts it, the Catholic Church accepts it, most mainstream yeah, religions accept it. The so it was, it was so a strong. debate we did uh, a few weeks ago, very yeah. interesting, about religion. So it's not just evolution, it's, it's, there are other aspects of science as well, aren't there? Indeed, yeah. I, I, I think it's just clutching at straws. I think uh, it's having your cake and eating it, to be honest, because mm. um, it doesn't stack up uh, to, to sort of tally the two. Um, but it's just a means to sort of, as I said, as all of us said, it's just to go start with that, that truth. There must be a God. We must find a way to link that evidence back to God. Yeah, but and it doesn't start up. Yeah, but OK, it's not just the natural world. I mean, um, for a start, we've got people claim, well, Jesus came 2,000 years ago. And um, the idea is that he was actually God in human form, showing us what God was like. So do you think if he'd had a DNA test, half of his DNA would have been untraceable? 
Don't know. Because it was, uh, half came from his mother. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, scientifically. Hmm? I don't know. <laughs> it was all divine. I mean, well, so all his DNA was no, yeah. half your DNA is from your mother, half from your father. But it might so not have been, I guess. But, yeah. <laughs> but it was oh, a yeah. conception. It's all divine. It's just that she carried the baby. Right. Yeah, we don't know, do we? Right. I mean, what if we we are all God and the goddess? Good. What if what if I love all the prophets equally? I think they're all fabulous. But and Buddha, right. Muhammad, Jesus, right. Allah, they're all right. They're all right but okay. we man have distorted it to see, beseech this okay. external deity, yeah. which is yeah. true. Yeah, you like that? Yes, sir. What would you like to say? <laughs> Um, I, I think we were starting from the wrong point. Um, in, in terms of um, faith and how faith is defined, is based on conjecture, based on doubt. That, this is a general definition. From an Islamic perspective, the, the definition of faith or belief is what convinces the mind, then settles in the heart, and is followed then in the action. So the point I'm making, the way to belief is intellectual. It's an intellectual journey. But and what you find when, when you're talking about reason and ration, particularly... You know, mm. using reality, you will find that actually that this is very compatible, well, is compatible with religion. In fact, um, it actually leads you to belief of the creator. I mean, another point that's been made, we, we keep talking about gods and uh, almost in a sort of the, the human form. Whereas first we should be looking at the, um, the creator and starting from that premise, coming to the point of a creator that is eternal. Uh, and that everything is limited and dependent on the creator. Rather than an anthropocentric this, god. This, 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 well, yeah, yeah. this gentleman has just, um, just described confirmation bias again. It begins in the heart and then we go on a journey. The problem with that journey is, is it's a distorted journey. But the thing um, about the Quran we, is we, the, the Quran has some very strong edicts within it and recommendations to seek knowledge. Yes. And to yes, uh, uh, but the problem is with that, we, we feel as if we're seeking knowledge. This has been demonstrated. This is confirmation. So we feel as if we're having a rational, reasonable exploration of the, of the facts, but we're not. We're just confirming what the heart has told us in the first place. That's the problem okay, with faith. Okay, fine. That's why okay, all realities science. exist. Sorry. Okay. Now, in science, the same thing happens. I'm sorry. But, you uh, yeah, know, scientists has a has a hypothesis, um, you know, it might be a PhD student is given mm. an idea by a supervisor and he says, right, go away and see if this is true. Mm -hmm. right, so you start with a premise mm -hmm. and I think with God it is, it is a bit impossible to extrapolate and, and find out what God is just from reason alone. I think God has to come as Jesus, as the Holy Spirit in our lives and so on. But does that mean it's not true? I well, mean, I, I agree to the extent that, 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 you know, of course, scientists aren't free of these, of these problems as well. But, you know, the scientific method is, what, is, the, is the method by which we've, we've come across to actually destroy the processes of confirmation bias, mm. dest destroy anecdote, destroy emotion. It's not a perfect system. Mm. And you're still going to get very eminent scientists completely dis disagreeing on what the data says. Mm. But it's a brilliant and largely successful attempt. Oh, when actually... Einstein's theory of relativity came along, everyone had to think again. And everything changed. Wasn't it all? Thank you all very much indeed. Thank you for that. We're all God. <laughs> That's the message we take from it. And if you've got something to say about that debate, log on bbc.co.uk slash the big questions. Follow the link to the uh, online discussions.